you've organically grown your personal brand and business because you are the brand. Lydia's Kitchen is you. And as much as it's about the kitchen, actually, it's so much more as well. You've got, you know, you talk about luxury restaurants, dining. It's that whole approach to how would you describe it and what you're offering? I think it's just about living deliciously, whether it's cooking in your own kitchen or experiencing great restaurants and fine dining and local places and just or places around the world that inspire you. Yeah. I think we all have such a connection with food. You know, it just represents so much. It connects. It connects us all. It's really the great unifier, I feel. Mm. So yeah, it's really about eating and cooking and enjoying and sharing and everything that goes goes along with that in that realm. This episode is brought to you by the Travel Counselors, the only franchise travel company in the UAE. If you're inspired to start a business like many of the guests we have on the podcast, love to travel, and the thought of planning dream bucket list holidays lights you up, then this could be the opportunity for you. This flexible business allows you to work from home, bonus, whilst travel counselors provide the training, back office support, licensing, and access to industry leading booking platform. If you're passionate about travel and have an entrepreneurial spirit and interested in joining a company that put care at the heart of everything that they do, then click the links in the show notes below. And in today's episode, I'm speaking to Dubai's foremost culinary storyteller, Lydia. Now she combines the world of food, fashion and entertaining, as you're going to hear in this podcast. She built one of Dubai's best kept secrets, a boutique catering company, and then expanded into what is now Lydia's Kitchen. So it started off as a blog and has grown into something so much more where she um, interviews um, incredible chefs, brings together dining experiences and so much more. She's the creator of a series of baking kit recipes which are available on Harrods, John Lewis's, Phoenix and she does so many collaborations with fabulous brands. So let's get into the episode and hear her story. Welcome to the show, Lydia. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I think I remember, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the first time we met each other was about eight or nine years ago in Bloomingdale's an activation in the kitchen. Yes. Yeah, I think it was about eight or nine years ago. And I remember I saw you in the cafe. I think it was 40 Carats. It was called yeah, 40 downstairs. Carats. Yeah, downstairs. Yes, at the, at the, the time. Du- yeah, in Dubamo. I saw you there and I was like, oh my God, that's Kelly Lundberg. And I went up to you and I was like, I love your Instagram page. And I was quite nervous. It was my first, I was doing a a cooking activation in Bloomingdale's and it was a few hours before. So I was preparing and I was a little bit nervous. And um, you actually, if I remember correctly, you um, put my mind at ease and you, it it really helped. You were sort of like an anchor and you you made me feel very comfortable. But you did it with such grace and elegance in the kitchen. If you see me cooking, it's like, like that it's a mess and everything, but you did it so effortlessly. So I remember that. And then we've seen each other at various events over the yeah, years. Yeah. And then, yeah, I, I just thought it would be great to have you on to talk a little bit about your journey that you've gone through from starting a business kind of from your kitchen and what it's brought to now in terms of content creation, sponsorship deals. I mean, there's a lot that you've got going on with different hats with yes, Lydia's Kitchen. So lot. why don't we just kind of bring it back to how did it all start? So Lydia's Kitchen started in um, in Lydia's Kitchen, started in my kitchen. Um, when my second child was about one, mm-hmm. I started catering from home. I had a friend that had asked me to um, bake a birthday cake for some, one of her employees at work in, uh, in the trade center. So I did that and then one thing led to another. That company commissioned me to make all the employees' birthday cakes. There were, I think, 35. And then I started doing executive lunches. And I was it was really a home-based catering company that started organically. I didn't plan it. It just I just kind of rolled with it. I did that for about 10 years. And then after my daughter was born, I started a blog just to share my love of cooking and writing a blog called Lydia's Kitchen. And that um, evolved into a website and one thing led to another, started working with chefs, different brands on board, and um, here we are today. I love it. I thought that piece of kind of, you've you've, um, 
I say accidentally, but you've organically grown your personal brand and business because you are the brand. Lydia's Kitchen is you. And as much as it's about the kitchen, actually, it's so much more as well. You've got, you know, you talk about luxury restaurants, dining. It's that whole approach to how would you describe it and what you're offering? I think it's just about living deliciously, um, yeah. whether it's cooking in your own kitchen or experiencing great restaurants and fine dining and local places and just or places around the world that inspire you. Yeah. I think we all have such a connection with food. You know, it just represents so much. It connects. It connects us all. It's really the great unifier, I feel. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's really about eating and cooking and enjoying and sharing and everything that goes goes along with that in that realm. So it started as a blog. So what, you just sat down one day and thought, I'm going to just write I some just, words? Or? I did. I wanted to do it for a while. And it was actually my neighbor that was like, you know, you've been talking about this for ages. Just write an entry. She's like, just start. And I actually, my first entry was, it starts today. And I just started writing from there. And um, I loved it. I yeah. loved it. It was so exhilarating. And it took me away from that practical ac aspect of being in the kitchen, of catering on my own. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it just, it was just a different outlet to share my thoughts and share ideas. And I really loved it. And it just sort of started something else. And then from then, what made you think I need to set up a website? Because I think, and again, we're talking, what when was that, 2014, you'd said? So 2014, I started the blog and the website started 2015, yes. January 2015. So we're nearly, night. that's nine years on but what made that difference from going because a blog's one thing and then to go do you know what website and business because I always see that that's a big credibility booster when you've got a website yes yes I think that the turning point was when I started doing spotlights with chefs and restaurants and I had this little so I had this idea of going into a restaurant I remember it was Koya I was at Koya it was my birthday and I thought wouldn't it be great to go behind the scenes with a chef and not review the restaurant but really showcase the kind of magic that goes on behind the scenes with these great chefs Love and great it. restaurants yeah. and um, so I did that um, I actually I had approached this one restaurant and they were like no we don't know Lydia's kitchen you're not going to come into the kitchen and work with our chefs like who are you kind of thing um, so I actually I, I approached a different restaurant and I think Lasser, do you remember Lasser? Yeah. It's since closed. Love it, 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 uh did this spotlight with a chef. And instead of sort of wearing a chef's uniform, I just wore something that I would entertain in. And um, I published that ent entry. And to my surprise, there was a lot of interest from fashion brands as well as yeah. restaurants. So that was kind of the time that I thought, okay, maybe it is time to see what else I can do with this. And then I worked with Koya shortly after that and a bunch of great restaurants followed. Um, then I started working with different fashion brands. So I think it was about, it was around that time that I really thought, okay, I need something more than just a blog. And I think that's something that when people are starting out, they start small and, and they're like, okay, the next steps, you know, and one of the things I see quite a lot is at the moment, given the technology nowadays is people have just an Instagram account and they run their business off their Instagram. Yes. And I get quite frightened when that is the only place that they are generating their business and they're not directing and collecting email addresses and not bringing people elsewhere because you don't own Instagram. You it's don't. not yours. And the credibility piece, I think, is then not there. And anything can happen. Yes. Can't adjust. And if, you know, if you have, you've got your Instagram account and then you, you link that to your website, as you said, it's just so much more of a credibility booster. And you have, you know, your Instagram account can be the glimpse that can be like, it, well, they say it's your shop window, right? Yeah, absolutely. Is yeah, And then your there. website is more of the meat. Um, yeah. Pardon the pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. But that's so that's how everything's kind of evolved. And then when did you get? Because I think it's also when people are listening to this and watching this now going, OK, so I'm going to start a blog and I'm going to get a website. And when did it actually get to the point where it's like, OK, you're going to get paid for this and it's not the collaboration. And, you know, how did you start monetizing the brand of Lydia's Kitchen? So, again, going back to the restaurant spotlights that I started with La Serre, um, producing those pieces, um, getting a crew on board, and it wasn't just me and my phone. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a cost associated with that and realizing, OK, I've got to cover my costs and then recognizing your value, what can you bring to the client? You know, it's it's more than okay, collaborate. I go to this restaurant, I'll take some photos. It's more of a what what 
value can I bring? What can I do for the restaurant to make it, um, how would I say, um, not tangible, but what am I offering? Mm -hmm. So it's recognizing, I think, recognizing my own value and skill and bringing yeah. something to these different venues. And yeah, my husband was also a little bit, a little bit of a nudge there. Like you can't be financing these projects. Just, it's not going to happen. Well, and yeah. I think often we need that external kind yes. of, you know, push and saying, oh, but I, you know, I enjoy it. And then the next one I will, but something when I'm mentoring, you know, clients through personal brand strategy, we get to that point of, you know, what's your fees, you know, your speaking fee or what's your service fee or what's your sponsorship fee? There, everything comes at a cost. It does. And I think recognizing your value, mm -hmm. it's tough, I think, especially when, you know, going back to my initial experience, it, I, as I say, accidentally fell into everything. I think when you're doing something as a passion project, you forget, you know, I, I, I do have value. So it's recognizing that in yourself. And that conversation in the beginning for, for me was very uncomfortable to have that whole monetary exchange. Mm. But we've gotten over that now. So. I, but that is really important because I think people listening go, I have that. What did you do to get over that sort of, oh, I've got to pay? Was it the nudge from the husband or what, what did you do? Someone say you're listening going, that's totally me. I feel really uncomfortable you know, charging for that. You, you just have to charge for it. You just have to um, list your fees if it's uncomfortable or if they, you know, you, you have somebody that doesn't want to, you know. Again, yeah. I'm having this discussion with you and I feel uncomfortable talking about it, but it is, it is, I think you just have to stand your ground and you've got to get over that initial uh, fear of asking for what you want and what you deserve. Deserve, yeah, absolutely. So you you offer a number of different services within Lydia's yes. Kitchen. Um, do you want to run through some of them, and then I'm going to come back and ask what um, little I present um, culinary spotlights, yeah. create products, fine mm -hmm. catering. Um, a multitude of things. Yeah. Yes. Um, the the um, produced products, as I write and think, and you did recipe kits and they've yes. been, tell me a little bit about the recipe kits. So they're in Harrods and yes. in um, Waitrose and, and the UK and here. Yes. So in Waitrose and Spinney's in the UAE and Harrods, Phoenix, is that, am I pronouncing that properly? Yeah. Fenwick's or Phoenix? Phoenix. I think it's Phoenix, yeah. Harrods, Phoenix, um, John Lewis and Whole Foods in, in the UK. So that How was, did that collaboration come about? That was, so I was approached to develop a line of recipe kits, um, dessert kits particularly, mm -hmm. um, with a company that um, was doing ready D DIY recipe kits on mm -hmm. the savory side. So I was approached to create these recipes. So I developed a line of three. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just sort of, so they're products that are in a box. You basically, you buy an egg and some butter, or if it's the vegan kit, you buy your vegan butter and everything in that kit is there to help you create an amazing dessert at home. A lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of growth and learning about how to scale a product. It's one thing when you cook something in your kitchen, it's another thing where you have to create something Thing that is going to be produced in a contract manufacturer setting mm -hmm. where you're going to have your products in a box for people to make at home. You've got to have, you know, the instructions have to be on point. So there was a lot of um, trial and error there, but ultimately I, we succeeded in, in creating a really wonderful product. Did you ever think when you started that you'd end up with products in Never in a million and years. And never, <laughs> never, never, never. You know, it's funny, I was thinking about this on my way here. If I would have... In 2014, when I started writing, or even go further back, when I started my my um, catering, I never would imagine that I'm doing what I'm doing today. Never. I think if I would were to th say then, you know, Lydia, put yourself a business plan together for this, yeah. I just wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have had the foresight. Yeah. Which I think is actually, for those watching and listening, having a starting idea and business plan is great, but also it's not the be all and the end all. It's not. Get out there and start experiencing it and make the mistakes maybe that you learned with doing the recipe kits when you were like, okay, that doesn't work yes. and that doesn't work. But if you'd written a business plan for it, 
to start with, you wouldn't have known the little things that needed change. Not at all. And things evolve, right? Yeah. Things evolve over time. Yeah. So I think I think a little bit of both is great. Mm. If you can have that business pl plan and you have, you know, you give yourself the freedom to evolve and, and kind of roll with it uh, because things change over time, right? Yeah. With your brand. So what's kind of next for you in terms of growing the brand and the business of, um, is it exploring with more chefs? Is it doing more sponsorships? What What's... Both of those, definitely. Yeah. So working with more chefs, um, working with different partners and brands where we're aligned yeah. um, with our values. And definitely a cookbook is in the works, Lydia's Ooh. Kitchen Cookbook. That's something that it's been a work in progress for a long time. But yeah. now I've I'm that the pieces are moving and things are being put together. I think that's really important for Lydia's Kitchen, yeah. um, as well as other products yeah. and um, growing from there. Yeah. So still content creation, a lot of content creation, more physical products and a book to tie everything together let's touch on the content creation because i think again you have to do it if you have a business you need to be able to create content whether you've got a product or a service it's part and parcel yes. of what it is that you do yes how do you plan and map out your content schedule for the week or the month how does it work um, so for my cooking content i try to map it out monthly mm -hmm. but sometimes things happen in between yeah. Um, so if I can, you know, sometimes things will change. I try to cook. I mean, now it's Christmas, right? So I'm rolling out the Christmas content. So that needs to be filmed several weeks in advance. Yeah. Um, it needs to be edited, um, everything. So all the content that I create for Instagram and social media, um, all of those pieces are linked to my website. So there's also, so you've got a cooking video on social media that will be linked to a recipe on that you can follow a written recipe that you follow mm -hmm. on Lydia's kitchen. So it's always, there's always that link rather than having the Instagram post where you've got the recipe in the caption. There you go. There's your post recipe in the caption. So I, you're I've always actually, driving them back. I drive it back to Lydia's Kitchen. And I mean, it was, again, that was tough as well because I think that sort of immediate gratification of social media where you have, you've got the video and okay, recipe and caption. Mm. Fine, but there's only so many words in a caption. And it is not always easy to articulate in a 40 second video what needs to be done in the kitchen to create a very successful recipe or outcome. Yeah. So that's something that I struggled with. It was sort of like, okay, do I keep putting my recipe in the captions? It seems like such a small thing, but it was. it's important for me to, to get the information across yeah. um, and not just have a piece of sort of throwaway content. The one, the one of the strategies that I'm looking at for 2024 is to drive people from Instagram um, to my page, uh, to, to my website for sure, but um, also to YouTube. Yes. Because YouTube, you, well, I make money on YouTube now that you, you have to have over a certain amount of views. Have you, you got a YouTube channel? And I do, uh, but that's, it's been, I've been really um, very lazy with it and you're just reminding me to get yeah. on that for <laughs> But that's one of the things, and I've seen quite a few content creators now that, you know, ones in the style industry, even in, in cooking as well, where they'll show the reel of the clothes and then they'll go head to YouTube to watch the full video and get the links. Yes. And then you can, you, you'll make money off that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one of the strategies that I'm looking at for 2024 in terms of redirection of traffic to monetize. I, we're going to have a conversation after this podcast because you're, yeah. <laughs> About that as well. Yeah. But it's a big, it's, it's such a big part of what you do, content creation. And I think a lot of people um, make the mistake of going, I hate it or I'm not any good at it. And then therefore they don't value it. And then they don't put the time in and it's just, it's part and parcel. You just have to keep pushing yeah. even on those days where those views are minuscule and you're just like, oh God, just keep doing it. It's just true. keep doing it. But I do think that link to having something outside of social media, outside of Instagram is really, really important. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the other day, actually, this is just a small example. I was um, in the kitchen with my daughter and we saw these, I had seen these little, there were these little pine cones, little Christmassy, cute little chocolate pine cones that were made with like brownies and brownie batter and covered with nuts and uh, and chocolate and they looked really beautiful and it, I think the reel was about 15 seconds it looked amazing and I thought oh, I'm gonna make this it looks great <laughs> I had all these like leftover brownies in the kitchen and I, had, I didn't know what to do with them so I shaped them into little balls and I'm looking at the video and they're 
perfect. This video is wonderful and the chocolate's pouring on it. It looks luscious and amazing. And my, I'm trying to stick, so the, the little, there were nuts. So you, you stick the little brownie balls, you stick yeah. nuts, slithered almonds in them. My almonds were so fragile that they kept breaking. My brownie ball was getting dry. So then I realized, I'm like, okay, I gotta spray some water on these to keep them a little bit wet. I had to split some big almonds, so I started cutting almonds by hand, and I was kind of like things, I was just, I was not happy. I was like, okay, I've got to make these pine cones, sticking them in, and I'm still looking at this, I'm referring to this video, and then I melt the chocolate, and the chocolate's too thick, and I'm just like, but it's not in the directions. Anyway, eventually, we got it, but it would have been really nice to have that little extra resource to yeah refer back to and put it um, all together where yeah. it's in more detail or there's it, where something it's a little else. bit more detail I, yeah. I mean it's beautiful the content was great um it's lovely but when it comes to the practical side of it mm. just you know getting the getting the instructions like there this is how you're supposed to do it so we got the pine cones in the end i love it yeah and head to head to instagram to see what they look like yeah yeah <laughs> let's let's see yes let's see doing collaborations is i think a big part of something that you've been part of in terms of that very first one the activation with yes. bloomingdale's in those days um and then you've gone on to do so much more well, if someone's listening here watching now how do they come to you do you reach out do you make a list of places that you're like i want to work with these brands all of the above sometimes mm -hmm. they approach me yep. sometimes i go directly to them and just do a cold call it's like knocking on a door sometimes That's what people works. don't want to hear because they're really uncomfortable with doing a cold yeah, call yeah you have to you really have to i know it's not easy but if there's someone that you really really want to work with figure out a way to contact them is and there one brand that you did exactly that with and it came off? There are, and I just can't think of anyone off the top yeah. of my head, but there are, definitely. People that you've reached out to. And yeah, some restaurants. I really wanted to work with um, Ruya, mm -hmm. and that was one of the first spotlights that I did after Lydia's Kitchen, after the website. I really wanted to work with them, so that way they, I approached them. Yeah. And uh, that was actually probably one of the first restaurants that I, I approached, and it went really well. I'm super proud of that spotlight, actually. Yeah. It's really great. Amazing. So, um, yeah, I think you have to, a little bit of both. I think, you know, on social media, you'll get approached. There are a lot of brands that will come to you. Sometimes it's a fit, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great way. But again, don't limit yourself to that. If there's somebody that you really want to work with, yeah. you know, just figure out a way, again, how to contact them, find the person, try. You know, it's not always easy to get to the, the decision makers, yeah. um, but it's always worth a shot, I think. I remember years ago, I was looking for somewhere new to live and it was a real kind of turning point in my uh, my life and I had decided that I wanted to live in a hotel. That was my dream. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, wow. Um, and I was like, so how do I make this work as a collaboration? And mm. I really sat down and I listed all the hotels that had residencies and um, put a plan together and went round to the... Um, the hotel to see um, who I would need to speak to. So I actually went to the hotel, created um, a pitch, and I ended up in a collaboration for 12 months. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, and you lived in the hotel? Yeah. Can yeah, I ask yeah. what hotel this was? Anantara. Oh, <gasps> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that just kind of goes back to... I mean, they didn't approach me, but I approached them yeah. with a great, um, a great offer. It worked for both of us. And um, yeah, it was just kind of proof to go, okay, if you want to work with people, you're sitting here going, I want to build my Instagram, I want to build my TikTok or YouTube or whatever it is, as long as it's of value to them, reach out exactly, to them. Exactly, exactly. And I think, as, as you said, you had a great pitch. Yeah. So once you list that, what it can bring to them, yeah. or what this collaboration will do for, for both parties and how it's mutually beneficial, I think that's, it's great. Yeah. yeah. And so, don't be afraid of listening your, your strengths. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I always remember when I wrote my first book and uh, I had gone in to interview Thomas Lindgren from The One okay. um, Furniture Store and he had in his office and I was always really inspired by this because I was sitting waiting for him to interview him and he had all these rejection letters from like HSBC Bank and you know big banks there were six or seven on the wall. And he had the wall. A, yeah, and he had all these rejection letters like we we like the idea of the one, but we're not going to invest in it. You know all these kind of things. And I was like, 
wow, you know, that's quite, you know, ballsy to put up there. And anyway, I ended up asking him about it in his, uh, in the interview. And he was like, I love showing my staff that, you know, rejection is just part of the journey. So if you're going to reach out to, you know, a collaboration with a hotel or, or, you know, restaurant or a chef or whatever industry that is, it comes with rejection, but it's not necessarily a bad thing mm. either. And I found always that so inspiring going, what's the worst someone can see? Exactly. No. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and it's it's a great metaphor for life too, because yeah. we're going to face it in many facets of our lives. Yeah. Um, and it helps you grow. Yeah, absolutely. You, absolutely. You know. So if someone's starting out, they're listening here and they're like, okay, I'm going to start a blog and, and whatever their niche is. So you're just cooking. What kind of advice would you have for them? I just think you should go for it. And if you want to start something, just write out your plan or or just start if you're if you want to start a blog just start writing just yeah. start that first initial sort of kickstart move just do it mm-hmm. just do it do you imagine if you hadn't done it and you hadn't listened to your neighbor <laughs> i yeah i i wouldn't be sitting with you today. Oh, I love it. But there's so many things that you have contributed and learned. And, you know, even like your kids seeing all the things that you've done. What has the impact had on them of you building your business and brand over the last 10 years? I think it's been really positive. I mean, my kids, uh, they, you know, they're the first ones to say, mom, this is not working. This is working. This is what do you, what, well, on you your know. content? Well, yeah. On, on my content, they're pretty, you know, I, I mean, now they're a little bit older. So, um, they're teenagers now. I think it's been really positive just to see, you know, I'm doing something that I'm very passionate about mm. that I love, mm-hmm. you know, the, the cooking side and doing something from home as well, seeing me work from home. I think that's been very positive as well on the family. Yeah, no, they're they're quite, um, I wouldn't say they're involved so much in what I do, but mm-hmm. they definitely have their opinions and they definitely share their thoughts. Yeah. What's the biggest myth you think in the world that you're in, whether that's culinary or whether that's kind of content creation? What is something, I think, you know, oh, there's that lovely picture and, you know, it's so simple and not much goes behind that. <laughs> and I think there's, you and I both know what goes on oh, yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. There's a lot of work to get those images and that content out. Yeah. Um, especially in cooking, we have to work backwards, especially if you're doing, you know, if you're doing an activation, like a live activation. Um, and a you're lot feeding. Of things to think about. There's a lot of things to think about. I mean, I remember when I did that at Bloomingdale's activation, I had to go work with the chefs at the Armani Cafe next door yeah. and they had to prepare things for the audience because you can't do things in real time. Like I couldn't make whatever it was, like 60, you know, scones and chocolate souffle and whatever it was, whatever salads. So I had to work with them. You have to work backwards. Things have to be ready before you actually start prepping them. Even on my social media, sometimes I have to work that way. Very often, actually, I have to work that way. Mm. So I'll double prepare things. Ah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, so in that space, then what, do, do you manage not to eat it? Or then when you're creating it, like you've got double batches of I chocolate have, souffle. I have three kids. <laughs> I have three kids and a son that's almost 18. So yeah, there's a lot of... It all goes to a good home. It all goes, yeah. Right. I just bought a second fridge, actually. Just oh, came wow, in okay. the other day. So I've got uh, enough room to, to feed Keep an army now. in it as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, the food doesn't go to waste. What is one of your tips that you would maybe have for building relationships? Because I think that's something that you've done really well over the last 10 years is the relationship building with um, chefs that you want to work with and, um, you know, opportunities that are coming. I think where you keep in contact where you can yeah. keep in contact, um, you know, genuine interest in other people and what they're doing. And I know it's it's tough because, again, going back to social media, but, you know, everything moves so quickly, right? But just mm. sort of fostering those relationships, popping someone an email that you haven't heard from in a long time, um, picking up the phone, you know, even when, you know, hearing from you yeah, a few weeks was ago lovely. was, wow, I haven't seen her in so long. This is going to be such a nice catch-up. Just sort of making people, you know, you remember them, you remember yeah. them. And, and yeah, I think just fostering those relationships. Yeah. I remember one of our other meetings where, um, we were at the 
was it Drift? And it was the um, Harper's Bazaar fashion event. Was it at night? Yes, it was. Yeah. <gasps> that you... was the shoes. <laughs> was that the second time we met? No, I think we met. But it was, I remember your shoes that night. You carried me out of that event. <laughs> you did. I think I helped you because your feet were hurting. <laughs> I was wearing a pair of beautiful, I'm not going to say the designer. Yeah, I'm not but I remember the them as well. Remember they, they were stunning. Were, they were gorgeous, but they were really high. <laughs> And I, I, ha I love a high heel, but those were ridiculously yeah. high and I could no longer walk in those shoes. Yeah. Oh, you were like, you were, what, what is that? What's that expression where you fix the pine, the, the crown? You were like the, the one that was, you were oh, like I love that. Propping me. What, what is that expression? The pineapple yeah. expression. If, if, like fixing the crown. I, I've seen a meme on, on uh, yeah. Instagram well, you about were, you, it. Yeah. You actually, you came to my rescue and you made sure like I gracefully walked out of that event with my shoes in hand. Oh, yeah. but I remember, I mean, but that's the thing. At that events, was so long ago. Gosh, it was. Crazy. But that's the whole thing of, guess, you know, people popping into life connections and then you don't see them for a while, but then always kind of keeping that up. And I suppose social media is great to be able to do that. But I think a lot of people don't keep the connections. Hi, yeah. how are you doing? Like a post or see something or it's one time, well, that hasn't worked or you know, we're never going to work together. I mean, who would have known all those years ago that there's a podcast yeah. and, you know, bringing it all together to inspire other men and women who are listening to this going, do you know what? I actually want to start something. I want to do something for my kitchen. Yeah. And that's what it's actually brought. Yeah. Oh, I've got a few questions I want okay. to ask. Yep. They are impromptu. What about this one here? Lately, I've been getting better at saying no. Ooh, what did you say no to recently? Not going somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I suppose. <laughs> Not yeah. going. Yeah. Learning the art of the joy of missing out rather than the fear of missing out. Yeah. I love that. And that, that is an art. And I think more people, um, are, I think more people need to do that rather yeah. than actually going and doing something that you don't want to do. Mm. I love that. I lose all willpower when it comes to chocolate <laughs> favorite type of chocolate i like dark chocolate yeah i like dark uh, ice cream actually i love ice cream Oof, mm. that's my guilty pleasure i have to say i do love a bit of cold stone and mix all yes. the uh, the bits in there okay here's one i'm particularly stubborn about i like to get things done the way they should be done yeah so i can be stubborn in that way yeah, needs to be done sure right. yeah yeah Everyone absolutely would. How can people find out about you? Where is the best place? Social media? Social media. Yep. My website. Yeah. Lydia's Kitchen .com. Lydia's Kitchen com. Love it. Yes. Thank you so much for being part Thank of the you. episode Such a pleasure. today. I'd love to do this again one day. Excellent. Well, who would have known all those meetups? And this I is know. where we are now. I know. Thank this you for great. sharing Thank your you. brand this journey, your story, and just, you know, what it takes. Just, just do it. Write that, write that, write that entry and just go for it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Travel Counselors for this episode. If you're inspired to start a business like many of the guests that you hear on the podcast and the thought of planning a dream bucket list holiday lights you up, check out the details in the show notes.